go. Okay, so we're looking at tints, shades, and tones. I'm going to practice that today. And I don't know why, I just really like talking about tints, shades, and tones. So it, it gets into the complexity of color and makes things interesting in, in my mind. First of all, hue. Hue is a u word we use. It means color. So if you run across the word hue anywhere, I will probably use it in, uh, in my talking about color. Uh, it's interchangeable with the term color. So if we're talking about the color red, we're talking about the hue red, right? Purple is a hue, green is a hue, red. All right, so we're also going to be talking about saturation, okay? So if I talk about the color red right here, you sort of imagine, you know, maybe a cherry, right? It's really beautiful, deep red color. And that would be a highly saturated color because saturation has to do with its strength, right? The purity of its color. You'll, you'll hear the word saturation uh, in terms of its strength or purity, all right? Anything that you do to a color that reduces its saturation becomes desaturated, okay? So this right here is this very same color, but it's lightened up. Okay, so lightening a color will begin to desaturate it. Adding colors desaturates it. Adding white, black, gray, any other color. Basically, if you take a pure color and you add anything to it, it begins to desaturate. Even other pure colors. That's just what happens. All right, so if we take this pure red hue right here and we add white to it, you can see it desaturate, right? The, the color strength of it actually decreases the more white we add to it. Now, when we add white to it, we create a thing called a tint. That is specific to adding white to, uh, let's say, adding white to your pigment, right? If you're using paint, you're adding white to it. So we're not talking about the emitted color, but the reflected color. Adding white to something, it desaturates it, and, and what you're left with is called a tint. Okay, some people get that confused with the opposite. You take a pure color and you begin adding black to it, you get a shade. People use those interchangeably, but they shouldn't. They mean something very specific when you're talking about color, okay? You add black to a pure color, you get a shade. Actually, you add black to any color you get a shade, all right? But you'll also notice here, we've got our pure color, we add black to it. Is it desaturating? What do you think, Juan? Does the blue become desaturated as you add more black to it? Yes. Yes, it does. Exactly. You add any, you add any color to a pure color and you basically lose your saturation. You lose that color strength and that purity, all right? Now, you can add any color to another, and you get what's called a tone. This is also a specific uh, uh, usage of the word. Tone means um, you, are, you, are, you are coloring that original color with something else, okay? So here we have a tone created with gray, and you'll see here, this is a, a very pure orange, very saturated, it's very strong. You add gray to it, and look how desaturated that becomes. It's very, it's much weaker in this. It doesn't, there's nothing wrong with that, right? Use, use tones to your heart's content. You just have to understand uh, you're losing a lot of the, the strength of that color uh, by, by muting it with, a, uh, with gray, all right? So, the more darker gray you add to it, the more dark it becomes, less saturated on this side, okay? You can tone with colors, all right? So if I take this green in a transparent layer and I move it uh, over the top of this purple, these intersections right here are considered tones. And I have a heck of a time. I was looking at this earlier. I was having a heck of a time 
separating this color out so I could say what color that actually is. I can only see the purple and the green, and I cannot tell what, you know, I'm trying to say, oh yeah, what color is that? I <laughs> just make a little speck, give myself a little hole between my hands. And what I'm coming up with is kind of a, kind of a murky bluish color. That's what I'm seeing, at least. I don't know. What do you see? What do you see there. Anybody wager a guess? If you could, if you could call that a color right there, what would you see that as? <laughs> it's hard, isn't it? <laughs> huh? It's, it's weird, isn't it? I can't see the color in between, but I can see the difference, right? I barely see it. Uh -huh. I right, I can't tell, I can't say, this is that color. You got a, you got a dark green, what did you say, Travis? Yeah. Well, yeah, and, and everybody's going to perceive it differently, too. All right, how about this color? When you got yellow and purple, now these two are complements, right? Yellow and purple? When you add transparent yellow to that, that purple, you get a tone, and I'm getting mauve. Is that a thing, mauve color? Right. It's weird, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> You add yellow and purple together to get mauve. But it, you can see it's toned, it's desaturated in this area. But I would also say that using tones make your imagery really rich, right? You use bright saturated colors, you get, you get bright saturated contrast, you get a, a vibrancy in your work. Um, but you start using tones and be, things become a little bit muted and um, and a little bit more somber, deeper, as far as the, the complexity of feeling that you're getting across. I highly recommend it. Okay, so toning with color. All right, so without reading this, don't get to steal my thunder, what is the missing color from, from the color wheel? Did anybody think, hey, wait a minute, when we were doing the color wheel, hey, there's something missing here. Something obvious missing. Hey, you just can't resist reading the text, can you? <laughs> oh, oh yeah, I think you did. Yeah, I think you did. All right. So if you take the, the, uh, the three primary colors and you add them, all right, so these are transparencies, right, and different strengths, and you add them together, you get kind of a muddy brown, all right? Brown is a tone of all three primaries added together, okay? So that's why you're not gonna see it, you're not gonna see any version of brown in the color wheel, because it's toning of those three primaries, all right? Different strengths, uh, you know, you can take mostly red and yellow and add a little speck of blue to it, and, and, you'll, and you'll get a mostly uh, kind of like a burnt sienna color, right? Um, kind of a, a muddy red brown. You could take you could you could take purple, add a little bit of yellow to it, and you get uh, more of a more of a, um, a bluish brown. I don't know how you know red red brown. Um, all right, so tint shades and tones um, on the color wheel. So this center part right here is your standard color wheel. These are pure colors. And what I've done in this case is I've created more levels here and added white to each of these. So these would be what? Those would be the tints, right? Now these on the outside have had black added to them. And these would be what? What, the, what would they be? There's a more specific, huh? Shades. They'd be shades. Yeah, exactly. They would be shades. They are a tone, but adding black or white, you get tints and shades. Okay. How would you tell the difference between a fully saturated color uh -huh. that is, has the opacity drop down, that has a white background? Yeah. 
the effect is the same as a as a tint. You don't. I mean, if it's on a white background, you don't. All right, but the effect is the same as tinting. Yep. Right. So, so there's a there's a there's a little bit of a trip and stumble between color theory and applied color, right? <laughs> so yes, you know. So yes, uh, taking an op uh, opaque, pure color and re reducing the uh, opacity if it's sitting on a white background is the same thing as as a adding white and making it a tint. Okay. So can you see, all right, this being the pure color ring here in the middle, can you see the saturation decrease as you add more white to it and add more black to it, right? It loses that, that power, that the, the brightness, the purity, the, um, the strength of that, of that pure color, all right? And again, nothing wrong with that. Painters, m painters learn through experience um, that you use pure color sparingly. All right. Okay, so here's a little pop quiz. All right. Is this area right here the pure blue hue? At least in theory it is, right? What do you think, Gavin? That circled area right there? Is that the pure blue hue? Yeah. You'd be right. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so right here, that circled area, is this the pure blue hue? The a yellow tint or a yellow shade? What do you think, Juan? Uh, it's a yellow tint. Awesome. Excellent. All right. Now here's a tricky one. Is this burgundy? <laughs> red purple shade or red purple tint? What do you think, Sam? Red purple shade. Were you were you enticed to say burgundy? You were <laughs> close, wasn't it? <laughs> Not a trick question, but tricky. Okay. All right. So is this color right here, passion fruit? <laughs> I got Emery to look up. <laughs> and or. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> but we don't use those terms on the color wheel, right? No. <laughs> huh? <laughs> I'm saying, for color theory, you got to use the terms that you're given, okay? Because that, what that does is establishes us uh, a baseline of vocabulary, okay? And then, um, so from here, this is then your uh, orange-red shade, right? Because it's adding black to it. All right, so this image right here, what is this an example of? Tint, show, t tint shade, or tone? What do you think, Gavin? Tint, shade, or tone? Oh, just the green. This, this, this image right here shows you an example of what? Tone. Yeah, it'd be toning, right? Because you're taking one color and applying it to another to create a, 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 a new color, color depth, all right? Okay, so. Remember yesterday? Yesterday we had our victory pose and we added some color to it. We're going to basically take that forward and I'll show you how to do this really quickly. I think it'll be quick and easy for you. And we might even leave early. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and open up Illustrator. And I wish I had kept yesterday's work because I could reuse that that victory pose, but I'll just make a self-portrait real quick. 
Here we are in Illustrator. I'm gonna go ahead and create a new one. And I'll use print. Got my artboards and that is okay. I knew this existed, alright. So I'm gonna I'm gonna so in advanced options down here, I'm gonna set that to RGB just so that um if I need to use the RGB model, that's what I'm going to use, because I'm not doing anything in CMYK, for sure. All right, so here we go. Could you just select web? You could select web. Yeah, I, I selected print. It's kind of an old habit. No, can you go back and forth between those two color modes once you've already created the document? You, you absolutely can. Um, what I'm a little unclear on is if you take an RGB document and you put colors in there and you switch it to CMYK, um, it will it will retone all of those colors to CMYK. And I'm not sure if you go back to RGB if that if those colors stay in that there they'll be RGB colors, but they'll stay in that retoned configuration. That's my suspicion, but I'm not positive about that. All right, so here we go. I'm going to make myself a beautiful self-portrait. There we go. Looks exactly like me. That's the thing. Okay. Make myself a box. Come on, you. Ugh. Smart guides make me crazy. Take my fill off. Take my stroke. Fix that little chunk. OK. All right, so here we go. This is my basic portrait right here. I'm going to make it small and then get close to it. OK. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a pure color in the background. All right, so I'm going to open up my, I'm going to open up my swatches and pick a pure color here. It could be any pure color, so long as it's a pure color. All right, so you know that this is red, and, and it says CMYK red. I'm going to go ahead and double click on that. I'm in, I'm in an RGB color mode, and I can see here this is not pure red because if this were pure red, my red slider would be all the way to the right, and my other sliders, my green and blue, would be all the way to the left. So I know that would be a pure color. So it's going to be a little bit different than that. You don't have to use red. You can use whatever you want. If, if you said, you know, I really must use blue because that's my idiom, um, then what you could do is, you know, pick a color, uh, change it to whatever gives you pure green. Okay, so if green is your thing, this would be your pure green. Boy, that burns my eyelids off. Look at that. It's really, really bright. All right, now I'm going to create on top of that. I'm going to hit Control C, Control F. What that does is it creates a layer on top of it. This is going to be my toning layer. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click both of these and I'm going to send them to the back. Okay, I sent one to the back, click the next one, sent that to the back. Okay, so both of those are in the back. Now, if I grab that, just so you can see it, I've got two, I've got two layers here. One is my pure color, and this one is going to be my, my layer that I'm going to work with uh, for color. Okay, 
So I'm going to go back now to my tint shades and tones. I'm going to copy this and just bring it over into my Illustrator document. Woo! Okay, that's big. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make uh, a series of tints with this. Okay, so looks like I've got four tints here. Make this even smaller. I'm going to set this top one to white. Oh, no, it's completely white. Yeah, but we're going to change the opacity. So if I go down into my properties panel, Right here, you can see the opacity. I'm going to change that opacity to, say, I don't know, 20%. Right. Then I'm going to duplicate that. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate that several times. So if I show you a little trick here, um, I'm going to get, get rid of that. If I grab this and I move it to the right holding Alt and Shift, I make an exact copy and it constrains itself to zero degrees so it's all aligned, okay? If I don't do any other actions, I can hit Control D and duplicate that action twice or three times, however many times you want. And it gives me exact spacing as I go across, which is really nice. All right, now I can select that, that toned layer again and increase my opacity. So I changed it to 40% here, let's say 60% here, and 80% here. So you can see the tint, as I add more white, as I make that white layer more opaque, it's making the green layer uh, less saturated, less bright. Did I lose anybody there? You're good? Gavin? So that, uh, like the layer that we're changing the opacity on, is yeah. that supposed, supposed to be white, not the same? Right. Yeah, so what I've got here, if I um, de deconstruct this just a little bit, is if I grab this that, that layer right there, you should see, uh, I'll take the opacity back up just a little bit. So I've got, I've got two layers, one on top of the other. This one is the pure green that I made, and this one is white. And, I'm, and all I'm doing is changing the opacity of this one. I'm not changing the opacity of the original. This is the quick and dirty way to make tints. You could go into the, the uh, swatches panel and change that green, but it's not going to be as nice and pretty. This is, a, this is a better way to do it for this exercise. If you wanted to know, I could go ahead and do this. So I'll go ahead and I'm going to grab a, where's my swatches? There we go. I'll make this one, let's say I go down here, and this will become, I don't know what that is. It's really bright, whatever it is. Okay, so if I, if I wanted to, to create then a, a tint from this, what I could do is, I'm going to create a new shade, or I'm sorry, not a new shade, a new color from here. Say OK, and there it is right there. I popped it into my swatches panel. I double click it. Now, if I go into color mode HSB, that is hue, saturation, and brightness, which we just talked about, right? Um, so if I change the hue, I'm changing the color. I don't want to do that. OK, I'm going to hit preview on here so we can see. Oh, why did it, oh, for crying out loud. <laughs> go back. <laughs> okay, here we go. So I'm, if I'm in HSB color uh, mode, I can take the saturation and pull it out, and then I get um, 
a tint. So you could do it that way. That's another way to do it. I think the other way is faster. All right, so I'll go ahead and delete that. All right. So then I'm going to go ahead and grab that row, duplicate that down. And in this case, I want to be adding black to it. So I've got a row of shades here. I don't know if you can read that, but yeah, it's unreadable up on the screen. It says shades right here. So I'm going to be adding black to my color fills rather than white. And you can see it darkening up as a tint, I'm sorry, as a shade should do. All right, that makes sense, right? I got my tints up here, I'm adding white. Got, got my shades down here, I'm adding black. Go ahead and bring this down. Okay, now, in this, I'm going to tone my color, whichever I chose. I'm going to tone it with its complementary color. Anybody remember what the complement to green is? You can always look back, go back to our color wheel. All right, if, my, if, if I have a green right here, what is its complement going to be? Red, exactly. So I'll come back here. And so I can now grab each of these and fill it with its complement, and you begin to see it tone. Really hard to see when it's only 20%, but at 40%, it really begins to, to show the toning. Look at that. Isn't that weird? <laughs> Look at that. All right, so to compare, this is pure red hue right here, and this is green toned with red. Really different color, isn't it? At least it is on my screen. Doesn't look so different up, up, on, up on there. Maybe if I took the stroke away, you could see it a little bit better. Uh, come on, you. You see it up there? Ah, it's a little bit better. So you can see that this is a little less saturated. This is really desaturated. What, what color do we call this? What do you think? Burnt rust? I'll, I'll give you points for that. OK, so let's see. What is, what is the next step here? toned with a split complement, all right? So what's going to happen is we're going to have the, the original and then if I go back to my page here where I've got, I've got my green, my split complement will be what? I've got a red, if I've got if this is my original color, complement will be red. A split complement will be what? Purple, red, red and red -orange. red orange. Yep, that's exactly right. All right, so I'll go back to Illustrator. OK, so actually, I should really only have two. Because what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add I'll go ahead and put this at let's say let's say I put that at 50% opacity change those both to 50% okay now I'm going to make this color that's going to be it was a purple um, what was it there's it a purple red so I need to fill that with a purple looking red something like that right there would work for me. And then the other one was a red orange. So I'll select that, change that to a red orange. That looks pretty good to me. 
right up in there. It doesn't matter if it's not exactly right. I don't mind. I just want I want you to see the effect. When you start toning pure colors, that's what you are likely to get. It desaturates, makes the color a little bit richer in some cases, but it also, you know, it's not bright, it's not as vibrant. All right, the last one is toned with gray. So I'll go ahead and grab my top one here. Bring that down. Boy, quick lesson today. All right, so if I take this one and I go and fill it with my choice of gray here. Usually in the default swatches, you're gonna find a, an array of grays here. Pick one and you know, use the, use the same one each time. So I've got one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm, I'm choosing the sixth one in, the, in that row. You choose whatever you want. Six. Six. Five, six. All right. So can you see the difference between add, uh, toning with gray and toning with white and black? There's, a, there's quite a bit of difference. It really sucks the color purity away from it when you add both of those. Let's see, have we satisfied the assignment here? Do, 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 do. Tints, shades, complementary. Oh, and you want to label these. So I didn't label them, but you need to. Create another series of tones, split complementaries, and toned with gray. And if you get lost, you can always watch the video that was there. And I will also put the video on for today. All right. So any questions about this? Did I lose anybody? Yes. The split complement? The complementary colors. OK, so you, you duplicated one of these rows, right? And then what color did you use? Red. You used red. So. So the, uh, the layer on top, then, is going to be green, right? Because it's the complement. Yeah, if you used red as your base color, then you're going to tone that with green. The complement will be green. Any other questions? In, in, you don't if if you if you used this as your as your one of your as your base, you shouldn't even have to change your opacity. Just go through and change the the colors to to that because it changes opacity as it goes, right? So I had the opacity at twenty percent, forty percent, sixty percent, and eighty percent here. Any other questions? Gavin, you good? Juan, you good? Emery? Good? Okay. All right. I'm going to go ahead and